Hey strangers, welcome to Skeptic She or welcome back. I know it's been so long. I'm just going to stop saying that because who knows how much or how little time is going to pass between videos. Maybe I'll just get in a groove and post every day. No, I won't. So I just wanted to jump in and start by telling you all what I've been up to. So first of all, the elephant in the room, you'll probably notice that my lighting is a little bit different and I have a microphone now. It's a Shure SM58 that I've used to play shows before. It's not a studio mic. It's definitely not a podcasting or YouTube mic, but it's what I had and I have an interface. So I'm trying this new thing where I record my audio on this while I'm filming. It's gonna be a little bit harder on me to edit, but I think it's worth it in terms of learning and overall I, I, I'm hoping, I'm thinking we're gonna have better audio quality. We'll see. I'm also going to try to use my ring light more often. It's really tiny, but it's better than nothing. Summary of that boring story is I want to work with what I already have rather than making big purchases, see how far I can go with it, and slowly build up to a uh, better production quality. Uh, let's see what else. So my fiance and I moved to this new place a little over a month ago, about six weeks ago now, and we love it. It's in a much cooler neighborhood. It's more working class. We don't feel like we're living in a college dorm <laughs> anymore. Speaking of my fiance, which side note, I hate that word. I think it sounds so snobby. And I've had the word fiance used against me as kind of like this weird, power move. It's so stupid when people get this like hierarchy of like, I'm better than you because I'm engaged or I'm better than you because I'm married or I'm better than you because I've been married for 50 years and I hate my spouse and blah, blah, and I have eight kids. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say something before I interrupted myself with how much I hate the word fiance. So that guy in my life offered to make a video with me or videos with me soon. He has his own interesting history with religion and Christianity and everything. And I would really love for you all to hear that. But for now, you just get me like usual, which leads me to the actual topic of today's video, which is that there is a really common, I guess, accusation slash question that's, that gets posed to atheists like myself. I'm not going to go into uh, much more detail before we hit the intro, so let's go. <laughs> All right, so my camera battery did indeed die. I had to wait about two hours just now to charge the battery. Now that we're totally out of daylight and just relying on the ring light, <laughs> let's do it. So I got this comment about a year ago. It was actually one of the very first YouTube comments I got when I started making the more atheist type videos. There's so many comments that I just don't reply to anymore because I realized it's, it's not really worth it, uh, but there are some things where I feel like I should maybe explain them in a video just because it, it either comes up really often or it's just so, it's just such a common misconception that I would like to address in my own words. This is actually two separate comments that are related to each other um, from totally different people, totally different times. Wow, I am really rambling. <laughs> I haven't done this in so long. I'm gonna read both of these comments all the way through and then we'll address them piece by piece. First off, Mike Kelly said, can't get anything from nothing. Atheism is illogical and inadequate answers doesn't mean there are no answers. <laughs> Five likes. I disliked it. I was just feeling sassy. Someone responded, indoctrinated, indoctrinated much, are you? I liked that comment, even though I don't really think it's a good comment. Again, I was just feeling sassy that day, apparently. Then Mike Kelly responds to that response and says, killer response. You must win a lot of debates. You don't have to be indoctrinated to see through logical fallacies. Atheism relies on faith more than any other religion. The indoctrinated, comma, are those who cannot see that truth. That's the big one. And then a sort of similar comment to that is from this person, Aaliyah, who says, so you just believe that we were created out of thin air? Again, me being sassy, I just said, nope. Okay, so I have a lot to say about this. I took a lot of notes on it. So if I'm looking down and that bothers you, sorry, Jimmy Snow. Sometimes people can't memorize their lines and don't want to improv and just do better with reading off notes. Maybe I'll get a teleprompter someday, but for now, 
You're gonna have to live with some eye movement, Jimmy Snow. You don't watch my videos, who am I kidding? So the sentiment of both of these comments is pretty much the same, but Big Brother Mike Kelly gave us a lot more to unpack, so I'm going to mostly address his comment here. I'm also operating under the assumption that both of these commenters are Christians, or at least theists, and we're gonna go from there. So for starters, I'm gonna do what I've already done a few times, but for the purposes of this video, I feel the need to repeat, and that is explaining how I use the term atheism, and atheism in its common usage, and this is how I use it, it's a lack of belief that a god or gods exist. It's not a positive denial saying, I believe there are no gods. It's not a belief system. It's not a religion. There are no tenets, and it certainly doesn't rely on faith like Mike and so many other believers believers tend to say. Given that atheism in my usage is just a lack of belief, it doesn't automatically necessitate belief in something else. For this specific example, it doesn't necessitate the belief that something comes from nothing. So for starters, my question is, can we even know what nothing is? And I ask that without wanting to go too deep down a rabbit hole. Quantum physicists know a hell of a lot more about this than I do. I think even the examples of nothing that they've been able to demonstrate have in fact been something. Like there was this example I read about, again, I don't claim to understand it, but they found vacuums that contained virtual photons that could produce light. So in that sense, it was kind of like, oh, light came out of nowhere. Having said that, I agree that we can't really say something comes from nothing or the universe comes from nothing because we can't demonstrate that. This is why atheists can no more prove the lack of a god than they can prove the lack of an alternate reality in which all elected officials are goats. When Mike says you can't get anything from nothing, I am assuming that he's talking about how this universe began. And the correct answer to that about the origins of the universe is we don't know. No human knows. We can make educated guesses. I think any actual astrophysicist or any kind of physicist would agree with me that nobody actually has the answer to the origins of our universe. It's not that there is no answer to this, it's just that we haven't had a mechanism by which to find that answer, and the fact is we may never find an answer about the origins of the universe until humanity is extinct. Depressing thought of the day. Why am I smiling about that? Even though we may never know the answer to this, I think we ought to keep seeking it uh, for as long as we can. That's what science is all about. It's about continual revision and expansion of knowledge. Learning! To add to this, just because we have evidence that our universe did begin and has a beginning point and is expanding from that point, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is an intelligent creator behind it, let alone the specific Judeo-Christian one. I have said this in my videos before. So this is the God of the gaps idea where if you don't have an answer to something, you're just gonna fill it in <laughs> with a concept of God. For me, that's a huge leap. This God would have to be infinitely more complex than its creation, and that begs the question, how did this God come into existence? How could something that complex be eternal? Ultimately, this leads to an infinite regress, and the concept of a creator God becomes just as unsatisfying and uh, implausible as a lot of other hypotheses. But I think most importantly, when you use that God of the gaps as your answer, and you assume that you have the answer to the origins of the universe, that can prevent you from exploring new ideas and seeking new information, which as we know, given the current American political climate, can be very dangerous. To continue to reiterate this, I don't know is a perfectly valid response, an honest response, and an honorable response. Now we're going to move on to the sassier part of Mike's comments uh, where he responds and says, you must win a lot of debates. Um, you don't have to be indoctrinated to see through logical fallacies. Atheism relies on faith, etc. All right, so let's start with this ridiculous part. You don't have to be indoctrinated to see through logical fallacies. At face value, the structure of the sentence tells me Mike here thinks that people who are indoctrinated have a knack for seeing through logical fallacies, yet the very definition, or I guess if I don't want to be a hypocrite, the common usage suggests that you are not sincerely critical of your deeply held beliefs and therefore you do not see logical fallacies about them. Perhaps what Mike meant to say is, you can't see logical fallacies if you're indoctrinated. The last sentence in that whole paragraph seems to indicate this is what 
what he meant, but then he goes on to say that only people who are not indoctrinated can see that truth, that atheism is a religion that relies on faith. So with all of that, does that mean that Big Brother Mike Kelly thinks that indoctrinated Christians do not think atheism is a religion that relies on faith? And then I want to ask, how do you, Mike, know that you are not indoctrinated? I don't think that word means what you think it means. If you're so into winning debates as your reply to this person suggests, then you may want to rethink how you phrase, well, everything. I don't really have a nice pretty bow for this one. I just kind of wanted to throw some questions back at these arguments. I don't mean to enter into ad hominem attacks here. I really don't. But if you are genuinely concerned for my salvation and or you're just trying to make a point and one-up me, you really need to try to phrase things in a way that makes sense and that isn't self-contradictory. I think these comments um, about the universe being created from nothing, there was like a little bit of trolling and chest puffery in there and that's fine. Um, I really just wanted to respond to the underlying point in those comments, that totally bogus idea that if you don't believe in God, you either believe in absolutely nothing, you stand for nothing, and or you believe that the universe was created out of nothing. I'm sure there are much more detailed <laughs> videos on this, um, on concepts of nothingness and the origins of the universe that, that are much better than mine that you can go watch, but I wanted to give my eight cents on this. Yeah, and it's just great to be back. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and um, stay tuned for some more Scientology content, some more stories from my deconversion, etc., etc., and keep asking questions, and I will see you next time. Bye. So I would like to start off <clears throat> by talking like a 12-year-old boy, apparently.